Hi, everyone. Welcome to Building Games on AWS. This is episode five of the Game Analytics Pipeline series. My name is Gina Gizzi. I'm a solutions architect with AWS Game Tech. And in this episode, we're going to talk about game engine integration and how to do data ingestion with the Game Analytics Pipeline. Let's get started. So there are two different ways you can integrate AWS backend services with game clients such as Unity and Unreal Engine to send your data to your analytics pipeline. The first way is direct integration using our AWS SDKs or our software development kits. So we offer different SDKs for different runtimes. So for example, if you're developing a game in Unity, you can use our AWS.NET SDK, which supports C Sharp. The second option is using an API proxy with our service Amazon API Gateway. For option one, what this looks like is sending data from data producers directly to your Kinesis data streams using the SDK as shown here in this diagram. So you would use this method if you want to publish events from your games and your services directly to Amazon Kinesis without using an API gateway, which removes the added costs associated with using API gateway. This is also really useful if you're a game developer who's new to AWS services, but maybe you're familiar with C Sharp and .NET libraries. What option two looks like, on the other hand, is a proxy API that sits in between your data producers and your backend services. So your data producers send data to API Gateway with an HTTP post, which triggers a Lambda function on the backend that executes AWS SDK code to send data to Kinesis. So this provides an extra layer of security to separate your backend resources away from game clients if you're trying to abstract as much as possible away from the player. Uh, however, both of these methods can be used for cross-platform game releases, including mobile games, PC games, and console games. So really, you just need to decide what's best for your game and your company. So now that we know the different ways we can integrate AWS services with our game, let's do a deep dive on how data ingestion works. With the Game Analytics Pipeline solution, you have the option to do data ingestion directly with the SDK or using the Solutions REST API that comes prepackaged with the solution. Whatever you decide to use, data will be sent to your Amazon Kinesis data streams and ingested in real time. The Kinesis data streams uses AWS Key Management Service or AWS KMS for encryption at rest of your data on Kinesis shards, which is configurable up to seven days of data retention if you do need to go back and reprocess any of your streaming data. You also have the option to increase and decrease your shards depending on your data throughput. Kinesis Data Firehose consumes the event data in real time from your Kinesis data streams, and it triggers an AWS Lambda function for event preprocessing. So this Lambda function executes code to validate and transform and process your input game events from Kinesis Data Firehose before returning the events back to the stream to be stored in Amazon S3. So this is just to optimize your data for analytics before even storing it in S3. The Glue Data Catalog is also used for data ingestion. So this is a predefined uh, table of metadata that contains references to your data to be used for analytics and ETL or extract, transform, and load. So the Kinesis Data Firehose uses the Glue Data Catalog to validate the schema and load compressed parquet data for optimized query performance. And finally, your game event data is stored in Amazon S3, which provides scalable and cost-effective storage for raw and processed data sets that you might have. So this Amazon S3 bucket is configured with object lifecycle management policies, including a feature called Amazon S3 Intelligent Tiering, which provides cost savings for data sets with unknown or changing access patterns, such as data lakes. 
So that's it for today's episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you find this content useful. If there are any tutorials that you would like to see, please leave a comment in the comment section below and stay tuned for the next episode where we'll start diving into Unity code.